In this tutorial, we're going to take the CNC mini project we assembled from Designer Make and we're going to apply two different sets of toolpaths to it. One will just be the normal roughing and finishing passes to the whole model. The second set will combine 2D toolpaths to machine some of the 3D areas to create a much better finish and also increase toolpath efficiency. If you missed this tutorial, where we assembled this free mini project from Designer Mate, you can go ahead and watch it now. I have linked the video in the related video section of the tutorial browser. So let's begin by opening an existing file. So I'm just going to go to this option here. I'm going to navigate my way through the tutorials folders to find the CNC mini project files. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the CNC mini project file there and then click open. And this is going to open our project which we created in the previous tutorial. Now this is the 2D representation, if I just put the 3D view up, you can see these are all the components that we assembled in the previous tutorial. And if I go to the modeling tab, you can see all the different components in our component tree here as well. So I'm just going to tile the windows horizontally, like so, and the first thing I'm going to do, as, as you can see, all the text is currently in separate vectors. So I'm just going to drag a box from the right hand side to the left just to highlight them all and I'm going to press G on the keyboard and that's just going to group them all together. That just enables me to select them much easier when we come to toolpath them. So that's all we need to do over the drawing side for the first part of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the toolpath tab, I'm just going to click this arrow here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up the material. So I'm just going to press on the set button here and it's going to run through the parameters that are set. So it's going to make sure that we are working with a thickness of one inch material. I'm going to change the XY datum position from the center. I'm going to change it to the lower left as that will help me aligning that to the material on the actual CNC itself. I'm going to set the Z0 position at the material surface and the model position in the material block. I'm going to set slightly under just to avoid uh, any flat spots in case our material isn't completely flat. So I'm just going to put five hundredths of an inch above the model there. Rapid Z gaps above the model. I'm going to keep these both the same at 0.2 of an inch. And the home start position is going to start in the lower left at X0, Y0, as you can see there. And it's going to start the tool 0.8 of an inch above the material. Now we can actually just lower that down a little. So I just want to put 0.3 in there and then press OK. And that will then be the material setup done. Then what we'd go ahead and do is we'd first of all go ahead and create our 3D roughing toolpath. So I'm just going to click that icon there. And from the tool database, I'm going to go ahead and select a quarter inch end mill and then press OK. And then from the machine limit boundary, I'm going to select the model boundary. And then I'm going to select a boundary offset to be the same width of the tool as I want it to get down and across the edges around our model. So I'm just going to put boundary offset as a quarter of an inch. The machining allowance is the skin that we're going to leave on for the finishing tool to actually cut out for us. So I'm going to leave that at four hundredths of an inch. That's about a millimeter uh, in metric. We've got the roughing strategy. We can choose from the Z level or Z level roughing strategy there. So rastering in X is going to go from left to right all the way over this. And then we're going to it'll just profile around each level that it, uh, goes down last. Or we can have a 3D raster which will then just basically follow the shapes. Now it normally does take a little bit longer and it's, and it's good to use that type of uh, strategy when we've got a lot of intricate detailing. So I'm just going to keep this at the Z level roughing strategy and just give this a name so equals 3D roughing and then press calculate. And then I'm just going to blow up the 3D view there and I'm just going to go ahead and preview that toolpath. So you can see exactly what this would look like if we were to cut this on the machine, like so. So I'm just going to go ahead now and create our 3D finishing toolpath. So I'm just going to select that icon and from the tool database I'm going to select an 8 inch ball nose. So that's already selected there. It's going to quick check over the parameters and then press OK. And then for the machining limit boundary I'm going to select the model boundary and that just selects all the visible models that are in the 3D view. I'm going to leave the boundary offset at 0.15 of an inch and for the uh, area machine strategy I'm just going to choose a rusting strategy so it's going to go from left to right and as it's at zero degrees it will just literally go in a horizontal fashion all the way up the model like so. 
So I'm just going to change the name there just to 3D Finish and press Calculate there. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead then and create the V carving for the letters. So once this is done, it's going to bring us straight into the Toolpath Preview. And you can go ahead and just preview that. So that's what it would look like once we have done the 3D Finish Preview. And once I've done that, I'm just going to press Close now, and then I'm going to go into the 2D View. And you can see that the text for Vintages is already selected. So all I need to do really is actually just go into the V Carving Toolpath itself. So I'm just going to go straight into that. I'm going to specify the start depth to be 0, 0. From the tool database, I'm going to select a 90 degree V bit of half an inch. Let's press OK on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to project it onto the 3D model. So it automatically uh, carve that into the top surface that it finds on the 3D model. So I'm just going to call this VCarve Toolpath and press Calculate like so. And then we can go ahead and just preview that as well. Now all we would need to do from here is actually just create a profile toolpath and then we can actually go ahead and save those toolpaths and run them on the machine. Yet, if we wanted to create this a bit more efficiently, we wouldn't use roughing toolpaths nor finishing toolpaths to actually cut away the material for this flat plaque. If we actually just go over and just zoom in a little on this plaque, and down the bottom right here, you'll see the Z-level reading. Now, if this was actually a flat piece of material, you'll notice that the Z-level reading shouldn't change from its current 0 0.3189. Yeah, if I just run my mouse over that, you'll notice that it changes. And that indicates that that's not a flat surface. Now that's because we're using a finishing tool which has a round end and obviously it's going to be stepping over. So it will leave very tiny lines in between each pass, which is going to create that uneven surface. And also it's going to be very time consuming for a small tool to actually go ahead and try and make this area as flat as possible. So the most efficient thing to do would actually be to create some vector boundaries and actually just create a pocket which is going to create that flat surface area for the plaque. And by doing this we should also be able to achieve less time running toolpaths because we're not having the roughing toolpath machine away this area and we're not having the finishing toolpath come near this area as well. So that's quite a large chunk of our job which is dedicated purely just to try and get that flat surface for that plaque when we can actually do it really fast and efficiently with a 2D toolpath. So let's go ahead and actually create those boundaries. So I'm going to close the preview toolpath form and I'm going to go back over to the 2D drawing tools. I'm just going to go into the 2D view there. And the first thing I'm going to do is create the vector boundary that we're going to need for our profile toolpath. So I'm just going to highlight the top component there. I'm going to hold shift down on the keyboard and then select the wine bottle. That's going to select all the components for me. Then I'm going to come to this tool here which is going to create a vector boundary around the selected components. So we press that and you'll notice if you look very closely that we should have a vector boundary around all those components. Now if I just click in the white space, I'll deselect those and that'll make this a bit easier to see. And if I just click around the outside, you should notice that we've got now a vector boundary that runs around the outside. Now we also, if I just zoom in a little, we do have some vector boundaries in the middle. Now I don't actually want these to be in the profiling toolpath, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove them. So I'm going to first of all ungroup the vectors. As you can tell, they're grouped because it's a solid pink. So if I press U on the keyboard, that's going to ungroup them. And you can tell that they're now ungrouped because they're now dashed pink lines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Shift on the keyboard, and I'm going to select the outermost one, and that's just going to leave the inner vectors selected. And then all I need to do is press Delete on the keyboard, and that's then removed those for me. So I can now select that vector, I'm going to right click it, I'm just going to move this to a new layer just to make this invisible just for a moment. So I'm just going to call this the cutout layer and just make this invisible and non-active and press OK and that should then remove that from the 2D view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my boundary for the pocket and also the roughing and finishing toolpaths. 
So that vector boundary that we created for the profile will also be incorporated into the roughing and finishing as that will be our external boundary. Now what we want to do is create our internal boundary. So first of all we'll start with the plaque, so I'll just select it again, just press this option here and that's going to go ahead and create that boundary for us. And then also what I'm going to do is select all the, now it's handy if I have both the 3D views uh, active and the 2D view active here, just so I can see which components are actually coming over onto the plaque. So select the leaf on the far side there, then select the glass, bottle, glass and this one here. I don't need to actually select the grapes on the side as those aren't actually coming over to the top surface of the plaque area. So with those selected again just go ahead and then create the vector boundary for those components like so and then I can just blow up the 2D view again and then what I'm going to do now is I'm first of all going to go into the drawing tab as what I want to do actually is I want to subtract the vectors that are created last away from the vector I created first for the plaque. Now before we go ahead and do that I'm actually going to offset the vector boundary for the plaque inwards. Now the reason I'm going to do that if we look in the 3D view is that the border around the plaque is actually 3D and will need to be machined with a 3D toolpath. So I just need to make sure that when I offset this inwards it comes inwards enough to get the top surface. So if I go back into the 2D view, you can see that the 3D areas are actually grey and the top surface, which is white, is where I want the actual boundary to be. So if I go to the offset tool, I'm going to offset this inwards and offset this inwards by a distance of around a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to see if that looks enough. So we want to create sharp offset corners. I can delete the original and I'm going to select new and then press offset. And if I just close that and take a look, you can see that that is just enough to clear the 3D edge. So that's enough. So what I'm going to do now, with that selected, I'm going to select the vectors that I want to subtract away from that next. So I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard, press the vector for the other components, and then I'm just going to come to this, this option here to subtract the second vector from the first, like so. So we should just be left now with that vector surrounding the areas of the plaque which we want to machine away with a pocket toolpath. And that is all we need to do. So if I just go to the layer options and just turn back on the cutout path, we've got all the vectors we need now to manipulate the current toolpath that we've created. So I'm going to go back over to the toolpath commands. And we don't need to set up the material again because we've already done that. So I'm just going to go into the 3D roughing toolpath change this to the selected vectors. It's going to select from right to left to select the outer border and the inner border for our plaque. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the boundary offset the same, uh, the machining allowance the same, everything else should actually just remain the same. Just need to change the machine limit boundary and then set the vectors and simply press calculate. So what we'll do is we'll reset the preview and we'll preview the new toolpath so you'll see that's left quite a nice big chunk where we're actually going to machine that away with a pocket toolpath. And if I go into the 3D finishing toolpath, and again, just change that to selected vectors. And the, the vectors are already selected, so all I need to do again is just recalculate that toolpath. And then we should be able to preview that. And it should just leave us with that uh, remaining area in the center there. So if I just preview, we should see that we are just left with the area on the plaque to actually cut away. So what we're going to do is now we're actually going to go ahead and create that pocketing toolpath. So I'm just going to go and close the preview toolpath form and what we're going to do is we're going to take a reading from the uh, Z level reading here down the bottom right hand corner there and that is actually going to be the height that we're going to cut down in our pocket toolpath. So let's go into the pocketing toolpath it's going to go ahead and first of all select our boundary. So I'm just going to deselect them all by clicking into the white space and I'm just going to then select the boundary for our plaque. Now we're going to start at the top surface of the material and we're going to cut down. Now we can actually switch over to the 3D view whilst in this. We're going to cut down 0 0.3186. So I'm just going to type that in there. 3186 like so. And we're going to use 
a quarter inch end mill. So I'm just going to go into the tool database and then select a quarter inch end mill. Press OK and then from the strategy I'm actually going to use a rastering strategy as I think this would be the most efficient. So it's going to go from left to right at zero degrees so it will be going in a horizontal fashion working its way up. And all I need to do is simply just call that pocket and then calculate. Now we just need to make sure that's still selected and then press calculate. And we should now see that that has then moved all that material away from the plaque. So it's done exactly what we're after. And if we look closely at the Z-level reading, if I just brush the mouse all the way across, you'll notice that that is reading the same level all the way. So we've got a nice, perfect flat surface for our V-carving. So now we can go ahead and preview our V-carving toolpath. So I'm just going to select it and then preview, like so. Just straighten that out a little bit. And then all we need to do is actually just create our profile cutout pass. So I'm going to close the preview toolpath form. It's going to go into the profile toolpath. From the 2D view, it's going to set the outermost vector, the one that surrounds all of the components. I'm going to start the cut depth from the top of the material going to cut down to the full depth so I'm just going to type in Z equals there and from the tool database I am actually going to use the quarter inch end mill but I can see at the moment we've got eight passes so if I just press edit I can look at what the current pass depth is and at the moment it's at a pass depth of an eighth of an inch so I may just want to just put that at quarter inch as I know it's going to be able to cut through the material that I'm using so I'm just going to press OK on that. I'm going to use the option to machine on the outside of the vectors as we want to cut this out I'm going to specify no allowance offset for this. Now if we wanted to make sure we have a nice clean edge around our part, we could actually add a separate last pass. I'm not going to add any tabs, as I'm going to imagine we've got a vacuum hold down system. And all we actually really need to do now is actually just create a name for this. So I'm just going to call this profile cutout and then press calculate and then preview, like so. And then we can double click the waste material and that will remove that and you'll see our final part. Now as long as this looks all okay in the 3D view we can then go ahead and actually save these toolpaths out. Now it may be wise for us to actually move the pocket toolpath just up a little so it comes before the V carving so we can do that by selecting it and pressing the up arrow there and once we've done that all we would need to do is go to the save toolpath icon and save your toolpaths out as you normally would with your post-processor that's most appropriate for your machine and control software. As with any project we should always make sure we save our work just in case we need to make any changes at any time so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now so I'm just going to press to save this uh, as a different file so I'm just going to call this 3D toolpaths like so and then just press save. So that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching.